One of the times where she, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is in Qar Hira and she's going up to give him food and water, the Archangel Gabriel, Jibreel, says to Sayyidina Muhammad, and this is the famous you know, hadith that we know, he says, your wife Khadija is coming to give you food and water. Give her salam from Allah and myself and tell her that she has been guaranteed a, pa a palace in paradise after which she will not have any noise or fatigue. Allahu Akbar. That hadith right there, and if you just look at the little bit, noise and fatigue, if you think about the fact that what is she doing to allow her husband to be the prophet of God and the prophet of the ummah, she's holding up all the house chores. She's holding the fort down at home, literally. She's making it all work, and there's all these kids, not only not just her own, but also at this point in time, you know, Ali ibn Abi Talib is living with them. There's other young people living with them. There's Zayd ibn Haritha living with them. Right? There's a lot of noise happening in her home, right? And she's managing this home by herself, sacrificing to allow her husband to be the prophet of God. So he says to her, you'll have a house in paradise with no noise and no fatigue. There's more to the story, subhanAllah, but we've run out of time. But needless to say, what Satina Khadija does with the rest of her life and the rest of her wealth is give it all to Islam. Because soon after this, there's that embargo, as you know, where they embargo, right? They put an embargo on the Muslimin. They won't allow them to trade. And they're starving. And at the very end of Satina Khadija's life, she goes from this wealthy, wealthy, wealthy noble woman to having given away everything to the Muslims and to early Islam to the point that she's on her deathbed. She is so starved and skinny because she's given away everything, but she herself is starved. And she's disease-ridden, and she's on her deathbed, and she uh, isn't going to recover. And the Prophet ﷺ is tearful. This is very difficult for him to see. And he says to her, what you've, if you've had difficulty here, you won't have difficulty there. SubhanAllah. And there she is at the very end of her life until the very end in full support and dedication to Islam to allow us to have this Islam and full dedication as the wife who is able to allow her husband to do this great and noble work and dedication to her children to allow them to become the mothers of the mu'mineen that we're going to hear about at least for Sassana Fatima today. And when she passes away, it's the 27th night of Ramadan. And there she is of her 65 years of life. She spent 25 years of them with the Prophet And in that period of time, like I said, her name is Khadija, born ahead of her time, not just physically, but ahead of her time in breaking all kinds of stereotypes and barriers experienced by women. And not for the sake of feminism, <laughs> Not, but for the sake of doing what's right, for the sake of standing up to her beliefs, for the sake of charting her own path. But that path is a path, even though it's charted, it's surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 